Well, hello there and welcome to PDX Garden Home. I thought I would start the video differently today here on the deck area in the garden, which is kind of smack in the middle of it. I mean, it's more towards the west side, um, but it's in the middle between the, uh, between the north and the south sides of the garden. So my uh, thought here is we could do a garden tour today, uh, a June garden tour. And so I'm gonna take you uh, from here along the West Garden, which is an area that looks okay, but I haven't really been watering it or taking care of it. So you can kind of see uh, truth in gardening that not everything always looks perfect. I'm sure uh, you've already seen that in my garden, probably in other videos, but uh, yeah, I'm full disclosure here. So we're gonna start here, go along the West side towards the South, uh, towards the south side, which is the front of the property. And then we'll circle around all the way to the uh, north garden, which is the bigger kitchen garden that you normally see my videos in. All right, well, come along with me, let's do this. So here on this west side here, um, I've got some uh, beautiful bushes here that are flowering. I don't take credit, they were here with the property. Uh, in fact, I haven't done a whole lot of trimming here that's been on my list. It's like trimming the bushes is like the last thing always on my list. Um, and so they need to be trimmed. They're a little bit higher than they need to be. There's actually two layers. And I think that the design was designed so that the first layer would be shorter than the second layer. So you could see the flowers from both bushes. And right now the first layer has grown so much that you can't really see the second level that well. And then just beyond here about uh, eight to 10 feet is the property line, uh, the west side property line. And so as I go back here and I take you back this way, down this western path uh, you're going to see kind of the the west side of the garden which is uh, a lot of shade and um, not a lot of water unless i think to come out here and water it which i don't do very often so let me show you that this is the west side garden here and in front of you what we have is foxglove which i placed here i was curious we get a little bit of dappled sun in here and I was curious whether it would flower and it in fact has. So this seems to be an okay place for Fox Love. Uh, this is the, the house here. Um, and this is, I'm sure you knew that was the house, but <laughs> uh, this is where my garage is here. Um, but uh, anyway, this path carries on to the front of the house, which is really the south side of the property. And it's a little, where the driveway is and all that. One of the other things that did actually pretty good in the shade and you'll see it also back over here in the uh, south side garden where we have a lot of shade is um, is feverfew and this was a plant that I, I had planted out by seed and I had just a ton of starts uh, a year ago or maybe it was two years ago and so I just planted them in all kinds of different places in the garden just to see where they would work out and um, and yeah I kind of like how they add color and life to the to this shady area that otherwise does not have uh, a, a lot of things going on. So um, yeah, I think the fever few has turned out to work, has turned out to work okay here. Um, as you'll see when we get around to the north garden and kind of the, the main kind of flower bed, uh, the hero shot, so to speak, the fever few went wild, but, um, but here it's, it's doing just fine. Well, let's, let's move on. All right, well, here we are in the still kind of what I call the west garden, the west side. Um, we get some good morning sun here, as you can see, uh, but I haven't been watering and we're experiencing a heat wave here in Portland, so I should probably get some water over here. Okay, well, we're gonna transition here from the west garden over to uh, the south, what I call the south lawn garden here. Um, it's kind of the middle-ish south side of the, the south side of the property. Behind me here is the, is the road, and then there's the hedge that uh, that um, keeps us somewhat private and secluded from the road. That's a relatively busy road, um, not too busy. We're in a corner space here, so there's a main road there and then a side road over there on the east side. So yeah, come with me through here. I'm gonna we'll, uh, take you through uh, the lawn. Um, you know, I kinda, I'm kinda liking this. I haven't been mowing it because I'm lazy and also um, it really takes a lot for this to grow to keep the grass in there anyway. It's been attacked ruthlessly by the moles, as you'll see. Um, but I watch those, I watch a lot of those British gardening shows and it seems like growing a wild flower meadow is the thing that's in vogue right now. So 
maybe that's what I should do with this is let the grass grow and maybe then plant some wildflowers in here or something like that. Um, but just to be clear, I, I didn't actually do this on purpose. I just haven't gotten around to bringing the mower over here because I, I mow the area that I play in most, which is over in the um, north garden. As you'll see here in the entrance to this uh, south lawn garden, um, or what I should call the what I should call the lazy meadow garden, um, I've got uh, impatience here, and this is uh, my first time having any success really in growing impatience. So I uh, grew them from seed into pots and then put them out here, and uh, I like it. I like how it's turned out here. So uh, this may become a impatient area going forward. It's it's working out well here. Um, and as we move along here, uh, beyond the impatience, I have back here uh, a snapdragon. Again, I'm testing to see like what can what can actually go well out here. Um, as we continue coming through this area, you're going to see more feverfew. Uh, that's doing okay out here. Um, I've even put some pot marigold calendula out here and it seems to be doing okay. So out here in my lazy meadow, uh, what you can see here, this is the south side of the property. That's the road beyond that hedge there. The hedge is probably a good five, six feet wide. It's a really wide hedge, uh, which is why I haven't done a lot of trimming of it. Again, I'm, I'm always slow to trim the bushes and everything around here, but I do need to do that. Um, and you can see as I've continued trying to see what would work out here. Um, I had a row of pansies in here and they just really haven't taken off. They're, they, they're there. Um, I think maybe the rabbits came in and ate some of the starts because I had like this whole thing filled out and it looks like some of them have been chomped down. Um, but they might still flower, we'll see. Some of them were flowering when I put them in and they lost the flowers. Um, I even have some calendula over there that is, uh, that is flowering a little bit. So these begonias here, I've been babying for a while. I started them in little pots. Uh, they were they were little bitty plants that I got as starts, and then I grew them up in pots, uh, one gallon pots. Um, and then I put them out here this year. I've been babying them for a couple of years, bringing them into the greenhouse to overwinter. Um, I haven't seen them shoot up a flower or a cane when they're in the ground during the during the normal growing season. In fact, in the greenhouse during the winter, they shot up a cane. <laughs> And there was uh, there was something that kind of looked like flowering, so I'm still uh, I'm still not sure about these kind of what what they're supposed to do. Um, I mean they're they're good foliage and co and color here, so they're fine as is. I like them as is, but uh, yeah, I'm still waiting to see if there is some kind of flower show that comes off of these things uh, as we do this. So this area has actually turned out pretty well. Um, I planted a lot of uh, a lot of columbine starts in here. Um, and then behind that, I had a lot of foxglove starts, things that uh, these were planted as seeds uh, this last January and turned into starts and then put out here. I think that I would expect those foxglove then to be flowering next year. Um, and so, yeah, hopefully that'll work out. They, as a plant, they seem to be doing well here. Um, I have been, by the way, if you've seen my prior videos about my concerns about the South Garden, not uh, the, the soil being super dry and you know they're not getting enough rain because of the canopy cover and the roots of the big trees sucking it all up. I have been watering uh, a couple times a week out here for the last uh, few weeks and hopefully that's starting to help improve this. Um, I'll put more mulch down. Um, I've certainly put some fertilizer out here to, to help with these plants. So so yeah we'll see if, if I can gradually improve this. Well moving on. I'm going to take a, take you in here to just take a peek at what's going on in the woodland garden. I'm not going to talk about it much. I don't think it's super exciting right now. Uh, we've got some ferns, some hosta. Yeah, it's it's not it's not in bloom right now. The columbine that were in there have bloomed and, and they're done. So this uh, uh, this is the southeast. This southeast woodland garden is um, a little bit dormant right now. Okay, so uh, you've had a you've had a good look inside the woodland area. Come along with me, and we're gonna we're gonna cut through here into the east garden, what I call the east round. Uh, you may have seen it in a prior video, and uh, yeah, just don't laugh at my weeds and overgrown bushes in there. But uh, we'll take a quick peek, and then we'll come back out, and then we'll head down this way toward the herb garden. 
Well, like I said, this is a full disclosure video. So you've seen all my, my weeds, the wild strawberry and the overgrown round and the overgrown bushes uh, in, in there in the East Round Garden. Um, now I'm gonna take you down along the, uh, the side of the house here. This is, again, the East Garden side. I'm gonna take you down this path here towards what, we, what I call the perennial herb garden. So here is what I call the perennial herb garden, the main uh, anchor to that is the bay leaf tree and then in here we have uh, a, a bunch of different perennial herbs um, and some that aren't perennial too that we're fill that I filled in the spaces with this year but you know chives some rosemary um, over here uh, of course uh, thyme back here is uh, is uh, oregano that is uh, seeding up there um, uh, we've got some sage back here. Uh, we've got some lavender on the corners back there. But really, one of the stars of the show, um, I don't think it's perennial, is, is borage here. Um, and uh, so the, I tried growing it in the past, but this is the first year where I've got it to really grow big and flower like this. So it's doing really well. There's a bunch of lemon balm in here that stuff kind of grows like a weed. And so I have to kind of keep cutting that back. Um, but I, we typically, I use this more as the, uh, the reason I call it the perennial herb garden is because it generally gets about a half day of sun. And so I found that things like basil don't necessarily grow as well out here. Um, so I grow most of the annual herbs out in the, out in the North kitchen garden, as opposed to here in this perennial herb garden. But, um, well, we're going to round this corner. Uh, we're going to leave the East garden here. We're going to round this corner into the middle garden, uh, where I have my uh, stream, my uh, attempt at making a garden stream. All right, well, we're going to be taking our path down here through what I call the middle garden along the stream. Uh, there's a deck here, and then this is the house. We've essentially circled the house here. Um, and so we're leaving the east garden, coming through the middle garden here, and we will pass what I call the Rose Gate here, this big mess. It was beautiful when it was blooming. Um, but through the Rose Gate is the North Kitchen Garden over there. We're going to pass by the Rose Gate, though, so that we can kind of make the complete loop and you can be oriented and see kind of how we go through the Middle Garden back to the deck where we started. Um, so what you'll see as we kind of look along here is uh, I planted the strawberries in these uh, baskets here that are hanging off the deck. Part of my intent there was to keep them away from the things that are on the ground so I can monitor them more. Um, I'm having to pay more attention to the watering to keep them watered. I expected that the baskets would just fill out with a profusion of strawberries after having planted it. I used uh, the daughter plants or the, the children plants from the from runners from last year's strawberries that were, that were out in the other part of the garden. And um, the little plants that I planted have grown enough and they're produced little teeny berries, but they haven't, they have not filled out the basket. So um, I need to kind of think more about how that works. Um, over here um, on this side is where we typically, is where we, is one of the rose gardens, one of the areas where we have a bunch of roses, but they've already done their initial bloom, uh, deadheaded here. And so we've got more blooms on their way, but there's not, there's unfortunately not much of a show there to show you. Uh, there's a climbing vine. I don't know. Uh, it, it has kind of a trumpet-like flower. I know there's a flower called the trumpet flower. I don't know that that's what this is. I don't know uh, what this is. It predates me, but it is a it is a climbing vine that I've kept going with a flower that comes back every year, a perennial that I've got on a, I've got on a little bit of a trellis there. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's take a walk along this path. Hope you see some things that you like. One of the things that I've done in this garden here along this deck was planted um, basically at the postmarks uh, grapes. And I did that two years ago and uh, they're starting to kind of grow up. The intent is to kind of use the deck as a trellis system for the grapes. Uh, they're starting to grow up, but uh, they still, I don't see signs of fruiting yet. Um, I don't know if it, if some of them might, if it's too early for me to see that, but, but other grapes that I've had in the past, by this time of year, you'd see the little the little nodules that would be fruiting. So I, I'm not I'm not hopeful that I'm going to get grapes this year. Um, it may still be another year or two before they really fruit for me. But 
they are definitely growing. I was I was concerned that there may not be enough sun in this particular area uh, to, to make it work, but it looks like it's going to work. Well, if you're like me, you probably have areas of the garden that are new or exciting to you every year or that maybe did particularly well that year. It's just that's that area that you really keep coming back to and you're like, wow, that is that's the star of the year kind of thing or one of the stars. I think in a garden like this, I've got several stars that I get to enjoy, but this is definitely one of the stars of the year for me, the love and the mist. These were planted last year. They flowered a little bit, but this year they just took off and they bloomed. And at first I didn't, I didn't understand. I'd come out of the, the door from the house out to here and uh, there was this kind of perfume, this kind of soapy, kind of clean, uh, and then I realized it's this. This is what's causing it. So it's got this great fragrance that I like, a kind of a soapy, clean, perfumey kind of thing. Um, and yeah, it's just it's bloomed, and it's a perennial. And so I had some more some more of those starts that I continued planting down this direction, so that I can kind of continue this <laughs> this edging here. Um, so yeah, this is an area that I am particularly proud of right now. Um, also over here, an area of fun interest is I have an olive tree, so uh, that's uh, that's what's going on here. And it did produce little olives last year. I never got to them. I wasn't sure at what stage I was supposed to pick them, so maybe I'll maybe I'll go ahead and pick some this year. I think it'd be better for orientation for us to just end up where we started here on the deck, and then we can take we can cut through the potting shed that's behind me here and take that into the north garden. I'm really excited to show you. I called it the North Garden. It is the North Garden, yes. I'm really excited to show you the North Garden out there because uh, that's where I spend a lot of my time and effort. So come along and let me show you what I have. So this is the North Garden, and as I take you around here, it's going to take some time to go around here because this is where I've got all the annual vegetables and some flowers planted. It's where I've put a lot of time and effort. Um, you'll recognize pieces of this from prior videos. Um, so yeah, let me show you what's going on around here in the month of June. So this is the, uh, the super mega potting bench uh, workstation area that um, I was building on last year and you can see it in prior videos where I was working on this. It's been going great. It's worked out really well for me. Um, I've really enjoyed it. Um, I've got my washing station and sink over here and so on the weekends when we harvest and we wash up veggies for taking to donation, um, I've got uh, a, a nice setup here. I've got these uh, boards that pull out underneath here is is uh, store or uh, drying racks for washing and drying washing and drying vegetables. I've got good shelf space. Um, as you can see, I've got starts here, flower starts that are still ready to go in the ground. At this point, it's the zinnias that uh, are still kind of in the trays and still haven't been put into pots or into the ground yet. They're kind of the last, the zinnias and cosmos for me are the last that will go in here for this season in terms of the summer flowers. Um, if you go all the way past the potting bench area back there, you can see back the trays that are on uh, saw horses and, uh, and uh, old pallets back there. That's kind of a nursery area where things have been outside acclimating to the weather. Really, um, at this point, they're well acclimated. It's just a matter of I haven't had the time to put them in the ground yet. Um, and otherwise, you can see that, you know, when I built this, I thought, well, gee, I'm going to have so much space. There's, you know, more than I can use. You know, it's I'm building a, a big structure because it used to be that there was just a just a sink area just right here. That was it, you know. And and so I was like, wow, this is, you know, I won't I won't use all this space. But as you can tell, um, probably like many gardeners, I've quickly filled it up with all my stuff going on. So this is kind of my primary hub um, because in the you know summertime it's nice to be outside so my hub is not like inside the greenhouse or in the basement as it is kind of in the winter or early spring. At this point when late spring and summer 
this becomes my hub and that's why I built it was to make this kind of the, the heartbeat, the, the hub of the, of the garden. Um, so come along and I'll take you back this way around to the greenhouse and, to, and then to the raspberries. Here we are in the greenhouse and what's going on here? Well, this is, you'll probably see in later videos kind of this in a more complete fashion, but here what we have planted are melons uh, and cucumbers. And so I did this last year, we'll trellis these We'll trellis these up these uh, strings or these uh, uh, cords that I have here, and uh, that will work pretty well for the plants. The problem in here, um, as I've mentioned in prior videos, is heat management. Melons and cucumbers love heat, so that works out pretty well. But e for even for them, when you start getting, you know, in the high 90s, they start dropping flowers, and you lose productivity that way. So, see, kind of the <laughs> all the fans back there. That certainly helps. But also, as I've mentioned before, kind of keeping the area wet helps quite a bit as well. Yeah, uh, I've got some eggplants planted here. I'll be planting out some more. I've got some in trays and some peppers in trays. We're hitting a heat wave here in Oregon. This weekend it's going to be in the hundreds, which is, or in Portland I should say, not just Oregon. Southern Oregon gets hot, but Portland usually doesn't get this hot. And so here in Portland we're hitting a heat wave and um, 100 degree temps is, is not normal for us. Um, and so I'm thinking I'm actually going to plant some of these peppers and eggplants out into the garden beds because, you know, in June, if we're hitting this much heat, um, then that's enough heat in June and that can carry on through July and August. We'll get some productivity out of it that way. And really, I can only hold so many in the greenhouse here anyway. These peppers over here off to the side, these um, are peppers that were overwintered last year. So the, this is their second year and they seem to be doing, and they're productive. They are producing things probably say it wrong, but this is a Jimmy Nardello um, sweet pepper. It's one that I like. I often can just eat it off the vine. Um, and then we've got uh, a bunch of other kinds in here, some shishito peppers and some um, jalapenos and some uh, various kinds of uh, chili, some uh, like a Thai chili and the cayenne and things of that nature. That's it for the greenhouse. Let me take you around to what's going on with the, uh, show you kind of the raspberries over here on the, um, uh, west side of the greenhouse between the greenhouse and the property line. So these are the, this is the, the raspberry bushes. There's about 25 feet, maybe 30 feet of a hedge here of raspberries. And then there's a little bit of a path and then there's the fence on the property line there to the, to the neighbor's property. Um, so we definitely enjoy these raspberries. They're, they've, they just came on the last week and now with all the heat that we've had, they're like, immediately ripe, many of them. I'm uh, giving them water. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what the season is. I know that they usually come on now, but what I mean by figuring out what the season is, is that I think the first year that I was here and we had these raspberries, uh, I thought they lasted for about a month, you know, so they came on kind of mid to late June and then they lasted till mid to late August. But I feel like last, or mid to late July, excuse me, but I feel like last year that we actually got about two months out of them and I was watering them a bit last year. So I'm wondering if maybe that's the key is if I keep them watered, then maybe they last a little longer. I, these are the, um, obviously the June bearing raspberries. There's, you know, if you're looking at raspberries, there's, there's kinds that actually bear later in the season on purpose. Uh, that's not what these are. Um, uh, so, you know, they'll all bear fruit right now. And then, you know, they've, but some of them have small little fruits on them. And so they'll just keep bearing fruit for a while here, I think. And, we get way more raspberries than we can eat out, out of a 25 foot row here. All right, well, come along. I'm gonna take you around the back of the greenhouse. I'll show you kind of an other nursery area for having uh, plant starts kind of ready to go in the ground and then head into the vegetable garden. Well, I'm gonna talk at you while uh, rotating the rotating the view because we've, we've rounded the corner and uh, here is another, this is the back of the greenhouse and another area where I keep plant starts. Um, and again, you know, the only thing that's out here now are some flowers. I've obviously got some petunias here and some um, zinnias and cosmos. And so these still need to find, find homes for them. Um, it's, kind of, it's kind of fun, right? I've got these plant starts here. And so it's kind of like I get to paint the garden with flowers um, as I feel like it, where I see, oh, that would be nice to kind of make that look a certain way or put that in there. So having the material, the raw material available to kind of uh, play with that is 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 fun. Um, I'm going to rotate you around here to see the back corner here, and then let's come along with me. I hit my head on that thing all the time. 
Yeah, dropped you right in here in the back corner. So this is what I call the, the horseshoe garden. There's a little burnt area here, and then it's got uh, nice plantings in here that didn't come from me. These were already in the house at the property. Um, comes around here. I did. Uh, I planted this tree kind of as a anchor point in the this year in the back. This came from a neighbor who has uh, a nice plum tree that always has a lot of saplings coming off of it. So we dug up that sapling from the neighbor and we plopped it here and uh, hoping to see that it uh, fruits for us in the next couple of years. Well, I promised a full disclosure garden tour. So, you know, down this down this path here, as you can see down this row, this is the, the you know, I call this the North Garden. This is the North Wall here. Um, this is the wall. It is a fence, right? It's the north fence. Um, and so then that's the property line, the neighbor on the other side there. Um, and along this bed here, along this bed here, I've got uh, multiple flowers, some which are uh, things that were in here to begin with, the rose, the roses, um, some uh, peonies, which are have already bloomed and are gone. So the foliage is here, but you, you don't see the peony flowers here. Um, and then I planted a row in here of uh, uh, an annual coleus, the, the, the leafy kind of plant, um, and I've got a couple of blueberries plants that I had moved from other parts of the garden into this area. So, um, and then at the end is the first place that I ever tried having that fever view flower, which you see all over my garden. The, um, I've got some more blueberry bushes here. Uh, this is flax that is that is here, These, this blue flax. It is actually a perennial, so I planted it originally from seed a couple of years ago, and it just it keeps coming back nicely, which is good. And so, yeah, I'll take you down this way, but I mentioned full disclosure. At the very end, beyond that, is kind of my wood pile. So <laughs> the not so nice thing look part of the garden, which I try to hide back there, is some lumber with, uh, with a blue tarp over it. Um, that's probably a pretty uh, valuable area right now, considering the prices of lumber in the country <laughs> have, have, been, have been so high, but it's left. All right, well, come along with me and uh, we'll come around here and then circle back and take a look at the, the next row there. Okay, well, um, I'm gonna take you down this garden row here. We've got uh, seven rows here um, in what I call the main garden. I have to give these things labels because I'm writing notes. Uh, I'm keeping notes of where I have things planted. So I have to know that this is the main, this area with the raised beds is the main garden. This is row six, that's row seven. I do that instead of putting tags in the ground. I just, I keep it in notes with that kind of that kind of detail so I can look at if I want to know where something is I can go to my notes and locate it in my notes and say okay what was that kind of thing right so here uh, this is a uh, volunteer fennel it's now at the stage where it's going to seed here um, early on and it's it was I let it go it was fun because I like I like the taste of the fennel the that licorice type taste and so I'd break off the branches and suck on them but it's once it gets to this size and this it's not uh, it's not as tasty to do that with it gets more fibrous and the sugars have kind of gone out of the stems to some extent and now they're kind of more in the seed pods so i'll just kind of chew on the seed pods well let me take you down here and um, i mentioned i've got some iceberg lettuce in here i've got garlic in here that um, is almost ready you can see that the browning at the top so once it brown, once it kind of browns and starts to the stems start to fall over, I'll pull it. You'll see that I still have some scapes on these because I haven't gotten around to getting them all off. I've got some uh, broccoli in here that was planted in early spring, late winter, so that will that will that's still yet to come in terms of a harvest. I planted beans and winter squash in this bed and some winter squash in this bed. I've also put in my uh, sweet corn in here. So these two beds. Uh, rows six and seven here of the main garden of the main vegetable garden are um, are uh, beans and uh, corn and winter squash and you may recognize that as being kind of the the three sisters. What I found last year, I tried to do full on three sisters where I would interplant the I would interplant the beans with the corn. I don't like that. Uh, the beans basically smothered everything, um, so I'm not really doing that per se. I've got winter squash in here and beans, which will grow up the trellis, and I think they'll play happy together fine. Um, and then the corn is over here, and it'll um, it'll just stand on its own. I'm not gonna try to grow beans around it and, and let it get smothered out by the, by the beans.
Okay, so you might recognize these. These are echinaceas. They're growing really tall and vigorous, more tall than echinaceas that I have in other parts of the garden here, probably because I've got really fertile ground here from my vegetable garden. I'm growing in these beds. The reason I don't normally, I normally kind of reserve these beds for um, for vegetables, so I don't, I'm not growing flowers in these beds. I usually grow flowers in the borders or in the pots. Um, but the reason that I put the echinacea here was because I was having so much trouble with getting echinacea started and growing in other parts of the garden. Yeah, just a fun thing, a fun part of the garden. You'll recognize that I continue to have garlic in and, in and around here, um, and then more broccolis in and around here. This is part of my plan this year to do, um, to do more interplanting and treat each bed kind of as its own little garden instead of uh, planting beds that are entirely one thing. So I don't have one bed that's just tomatoes or one bed that's just squash, which is what I've had in the past. Um, I don't do that here because I'm not doing that this year uh, just because I wanted to try out what was it like to like mix things up. What would, what would it be like to like treat each bed as its own little garden? And um, and I don't know why I feel this way because from a space wise, it should work out the same, but I feel like I'm actually getting more things in the garden. I think, it, I think the reason I feel that way is because you designate a bed for tomatoes and you plant it out and then you still have space in it. And then if you're dogmatic about it, you don't put something else in there and so you lose space. And so this method, uh, you know, I'm just everywhere there's a space, I'm like, oh, well, what could go there? And I'm, you know, and it's like, because anything can go there. I'm not, I'm not saying that this bed is just for lettuce or this bed is just for broccoli. I'm more open-minded <laughs> about just putting anything there. And I think that's causing me to have that's causing me to actually be able to grow more stuff around the garden this way. So I've got tomatoes interplanted in here. All right, well, let me show you the next part. So these beds, I mean, once you've seen one of the beds, you've kind of seen what I have in all the beds. It's the same mix of everything. Um, I have some elephant garlic. I have some cabbages and some, uh, uh, again, lots of broccoli. This right here in front of me this is where the fava beans were we've already harvested them and and cut them down i left uh, about two inches of plant on them to see if they would regrow i read some things that suggested that they might regrow and that you might get a second harvest out of them the cabbages i was just talking to a friend the other day who saw the cabbages over there in the garden and said wow those are huge plants and it is you know cabbages take up a lot of room right i mean you got the plant this big and you're going to get a cabbage just like this and cauliflower is like that too i got one good cauliflower this season um, I planted a bunch of cauliflowers, but I only had one that's come, that's come tr that that came into a nice head of cauliflower so far. Um, we do have some other cauliflowers in the garden that that might still come to a head, but we're getting into really hot weather, so it also very well might just bolt. We'll see what happens. Before we jump into the central garden, I wanted to show you here this uh, this flower border here. So this is traditionally where I would plant a lot of flowers. This was my first flower border where I really was putting flowers in the ground. Um, I started out my gardening with mostly just vegetables and flowers is something I've gotten into in the last few years. So at this point, I, if you see previous videos, you'll see this was kind of a, a row of tulips, which um, after they died back, I've got green foliage, but my next round of flowers just aren't, aren't ready because the next round here are the asters. I also have some echinacea in here. Um, I have planted some new silver, um, uh, it's like that Dusty Miller, so I forget what it's it's got that silvery foliage you can see it along here uh, i've got a lot of it back there but i kind of finished the planting along here this year with uh with some more plants that grown from seed so this is what i call the central garden again i i just use that label for labeling purposes for my notes um but this is newer um compared to the garden over there i did have garden here but i had fewer beds and they had grass walk wide grass walkways in between them and so I really wanted to turn this into a much much more I wanted to get more garden space out of it essentially so we blew up the grass paths and we redid the beds and then we put narrow kind of little cedar paths in between the beds as I'll show you as we walk as I walk you through it here um, and so what I have here is a com again a combination of all different things each bed kind of uh, is like its own garden so each bed has uh, in here has beets and celery kale um, Chinese broccoli. I did grow earlier in the season choy some. That's all done. It's been harvested and pulled out. It's gone. Um, I have a lot of tomatoes in here. You see all these, all these uh, sticks or the, these wood out here. Probably looks a little bit weird right now, but these are all uh, stakes for 
indeterminate tomatoes. I like to grow the large indeterminate tomatoes. And so uh, before long, this won't look as weird because these stakes will be covered by green foliage of tomatoes and it will make sense when you look out along this. It won't just look like a field of stakes sitting out there or a field of uh, pieces of wood out there. I've got hot cabbages out here. Both um, One of the cabbages that I love to grow is called a Copenhagen cabbage. I get the seeds from um, Botanical Interest. It's really kind of a, uh, I think of it as a simple cabbage, but it's got a really tight head, a little bit of a teardrop, teardrop shape to it, um, and I enjoy that. Well, these these uh, last few rows of the central garden, the central vegetable garden here, have a, a few things of particular interest I wanted to share with you. Um, I've got some blueberry bushes out here that are doing really well. You know, they say blueberries like um, acidic soil, and I just haven't paid a lot of attention to that. I mean, maybe our, our soil probably is a little bit naturally acidic anyway, um, but I didn't do anything to make it more acidic, and I have them just sitting in my regular garden beds here where I'm growing everything else as well, so I'm not treating them differently. Uh, what's interesting here is this is amaranth, and it's it's a decorative amaranth, and I, I enjoy it as a decorative plant, and I planted some seeds in trays, which I've never even planted out here yet. Um, so they're still sitting over there in the, the nursery area that I showed you before. And uh, I may not plant them out because these volunteers, uh, which came up in these beds from prior year plantings, um, are doing really well. They're really strong, they're doing well, and so uh, I had volunteers in several parts of the garden and I pulled them out in places I didn't want them, but I just left them here and said, okay, well, this will be the area where we're growing the amaranth. So it's, uh, that's working out nicely. Um, I've got some, uh, some summer savory <laughs> over here um, and uh, more, more uh, lettuces and uh, a little bit of onions and, and things of that nature. So um, yeah, very uh, vibrant and uh, uh, to me, it's just, I just love coming here and just looking out on all this. It just makes me feel good. Um, we've got uh, over here on this side, not too exciting at this point, is the asparagus bed. I learned my lesson from prior year. I'll keep it weeded, although it's got weeds in it right now, but I'll keep it weeded. I won't grow any other flowers in here, and I'll just let the so what's left of the asparagus go to flower, and hopefully I'll get even more asparagus next year. I My harvest was okay, like I could get enough for a few dinners for just my wife and I, but I, I planted this whole row. I expected to get much more, much more vigorous harvest, many more plants out of it. Um, so over here, I've got another row here. I do have more winter squash, and so I'm going to do some kind of trellising along this, along this path here. Um, I've interplanted a few tomatoes in here. Um, we've got onions. We've got over here some celery, some celery, um, and uh, I'll, I'll, uh, one of the things that's interesting about the celery over here is that uh, it's it's coming along fine and um but what i was going to say is interesting about this is that i grew it kind of multi-sown so i grew it with a bunch of seeds in a cell tray in in one cell and i let i i didn't thin them out so i didn't thin it to just one plant i just let it grow multiple plants in the cell and then i just plopped the entire cell on the ground so i was kind of curious you know is it going to compete with each other is it not going to grow well so far it's actually growing okay um of course i don't have big thick stalks of celery yet here so I guess the jury's still out on that I'll, I'll fill you in to see if how that turned out when it's all said and done we've got some chard over here um, and over there uh, I like chard okay but it's not uh, I wouldn't say it's my favorite by any stretch um, but it's part of the harvest and something that certainly adds color to the, what we give away um, to what we donate so I'm standing here in between my new sea berry bushes uh, I planted these bushes these, this year here. There's a male and a female uh, is what I understand they need. So I hope to see kind of how they come out and get some berries out of it and see if I enjoy that. Um, over here um, is an area that I've shown in many videos. It's kind of where the, the peas are and they are, still going, they are still going well. My corn over here is doing good. I've got pumpkins in there. So the peas will eventually, they will eventually die and be done with. Um, this is the only other place right now that I have cauliflowers. So we've got some cauliflowers in here, and if they don't bolt with the heat, they're nice and big. If they don't bolt with the heat, they should uh, they, sh they should uh, produce some good heads. Um, I've got some onions on the end there, and then we've got some tomatoes interplanted here. Um, I don't have any steaks out here yet, but we will get steaks out here for those tomatoes. And uh, what I have here is I have a bed here of black sesame. So I like to 
try these little things out. You know, it's like, how much black sesame can you grow and how useful is it really? Um, well, this here is um, what I call an, the L bed. It is along the very north side here, of uh, uh, North Garden, and it borders with the neighbor or the, the property line there. This is kind of one of my primary flower bed. This part of the L is partial sun, uh, partial shade because it's sitting underneath these really large cedar trees, which um, I've cut the branches back so they're really way above us here, but they still kind of grow out and provide some shade. Well, because artichokes are perennial, uh, some of these artichokes are from last year, uh, left over from prior years, and some of them are were planted uh, from seed this year. Um, and and as a result, I've ended up with kind of several different kinds. I've got the uh, the round kind of globe artichoke, which I think is most common that you see. Um, I've got this kind of purple-hued artichoke here. And we've got this uh, like super spiky with some purple tent artichoke here. So I'd say those are kind of the three broad varieties. I may have slightly more varieties in here that I'm giving myself credit for, but those are the three that I see that are distinctly different in their look. Well, as many gardeners know, this is where the magic happens. Um, these, the compost area here, um, my composting kind of right next to the street there, it's super helpful because I have the street compost bins here too. And so when I'm sorting, I can say, okay, well, this is what I'm keeping for my compost and this is what I need to get rid of into the municipal compost, throw out into the municipal compost kind of thing. Um, and uh, yeah, so you can see the huge pile that we have here because of all the harvesting that we're doing and all the green and leaves that we've got going on here. I need to come in here and water this thing. Um, it gets wet, wet with the rain for the most part, but it's underneath a big magnolia tree here. And so um, it's, not, it's not in the natural path of our watering system uh, without me doing something proactive. So I need to keep it a little bit moist. I've got other areas here with kind of older compost that theoretically could be used, but as you can, as you'll see, I'm, I've kind of let it go to weed a little bit. Um, so, well, yeah, nothing's perfect. I told you this was a full, full disclosure video. This is I put more effort this year into kind of this, this area here. We had a lot of rose roses in here to begin with, um, and then I've interplanted it with flowers. Of course, we've got the foxgloves here. Um, this is the, I created this kind of hedge of fever feud here. Um, I do like how it looks. I, I, I'm not a huge fan of things looking like really wild to the way that the, that it's grown, the fever feud's grown tall and then kind of toppled over the way it has with all the flowers. It does look good, but I, um, I would prefer that it kind of had more compact, tighter habitat to it. And I'm wondering if I can force that by maybe trimming it down earlier in the season before it flowers. So I'm gonna be looking at that as a possibility going forward. These are perennials, so I expect they'll, they'll be here next year. Um, earlier in the year, this is where we had kind of the tulip show. All right, everyone, thank you for joining me. I'm uh, glad to have been able to do this with you. It's, uh, it's a cool morning. <laughs> I'm, I'm up early doing this in the morning so that I don't have to get uh, killed by the heat later this afternoon. So I'm glad you're with us and glad I can share uh, Portland gardening with you here. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.